Well, every now and again, I feel uh, compelled to make a uh, particular uh, video. And the subject for this one I've called Sewing for Men. Um, and what I wanted to do was to show how with very sort of basic skills you can make uh, a number of different items um, that ultimately are not that complicated but maybe the thought of them is more daunting than actually doing them so I really wanted to kind of show a range of uh, of different things that you can sew uh, in different materials really so uh, one of the first examples I thought I'd show is this uh, axe head cover uh, which I made absolutely ages ago and the, uh, the, the the principle behind me wanting to make this was that I wanted to create uh, a, a kind of a cover for this axe made out of one piece of leather essentially um, and I had this idea that if I could fold the leather in uh, a particular way and sew it I could literally make the the main part of the actual axe head cover out of one piece uh, and I achieved that and to do it to actually make it uh, I drew a sketch and uh, this is the actual sketch that I drew uh, just to get a rough idea of how I could actually make that and then what I did was got a piece of paper that was more sort of the actual size of the axe head and transferred that to a bigger piece of paper and then used a piece of very thin uh, off cut of leather. Uh, one of the other things I did was I actually reinforced this uh, section in here where the, uh, the shaft goes through and I made a little belt loop on it here and the button is one that I made out of mahogany and it's, it's not very thick but it, it actually uh, does the job really well on this little Elwell uh, axe which I kind of restored some time ago. So that literally just slots through, goes in through there and then you've got this uh, single button <clears throat> which holds it all shut and um, that was with a very basic hand stitch uh, that I did here. Uh, with a with a, a needle and uh, I'll show you that needle in a minute but that was one item that I made another idea I came up for was a, uh, a, a sort of a, a sheath for this bill hook which is a another kind of uh, rural utility tool and uh, is one of the many kind of tools that I've got this particular one is made by Staniforth uh, and it's sever quick and it's got a kind of a cutting edge on the back here as well. Some some regional bill hooks have that and some don't. So I wanted to make a sheath for that. And essentially what I did was I took a, a piece of cardboard uh, here and I worked out uh, a design. So I basically made a, a pattern, if you like, of how I was going to do this. So if, if the, uh, the bill hook was, was sitting in there like that, uh, there would be another piece of uh, leather over the top here. And you can see how I've kind of worked out where things need to go. This would come across with a, a button or a stud to, to hold it in place. And then this particular section here, it would be folded back on itself like that and would create a belt loop. Uh, to go on your belt so that you could actually carry that safely. Um, so making a pattern for a particular item out of a piece of cardboard, a piece of paper uh, is, is a really kind of easy way to work out how much leather you'll need uh, and uh, save you a lot of wastage. And um, basically my, my sewing kit, my sewing kit goes in this box. Um, and I've got a box here with, with all kinds of uh, pieces of leather, offcuts, beads, cord, uh, all sorts of things that, that I, keep, um, I keep in here, clips to make key rings with. And my, my leather kit, my leather sewing kit, is, is that, are those large needles and wax thread. And that's it. That is my 
leather sewing kit. Nothing more complicated than that. Uh, I've also got some uh, white thread in here as well. And I did all of those items by hand uh, after doing a sketch or a, a drawing, first of all. So I keep the cord and you know, little pair of work scissors in there, uh, pieces of leather uh, to make sheaths and uh, other items with that I'm interested in, and bits of cord. Uh, I've got different thicknesses of cord in here to do things like the uh, the little lanyard that I made for my uh, my sort of cold steel uh, pocket bushman and things like that. And I've got some more of these. Uh, I've got some more of these clips now so that I can actually make items like this. And uh, you don't have to make it complicated, you know what I mean? But it's, I think it's more about kind of planning, doing a drawing, having an idea before you start. So with the, uh, with the leather work and things like that, I've made all of these sheaths. Uh, this is a, a Green River knife. And I made this sheath out of offcuts of leather all again hand stitched and the the fringing uh, just came from off cuts and pieces of uh, uh, you know that I, I just had lying around that I sort of glued uh, on the inside edge of here and then stitched through with a, a thick black wax thread and the sheath itself is a very very simple design I do a lot of my oldie style sheaths in, in these kind of designs but they're, they're very effective and I think they look really good uh, and then this one was just a little bit more colourful because I used, um, this is actually camel leather from an older uh, uh, lady's bag uh, that had come from Egypt and I cannibalised it and saved the, uh, the leather and then cut each, each one of those fringes with a pair of scissors and again just stitched through by hand and then the, the sheath itself is one piece uh, and is wet formed uh, and then this was uh, Hudson Bay canoe logo um, which I kind of copied on there for a very old kind of uh, frontiersman's knife uh, again one of my favorite shapes and favorite designs that so not a very thick sheath but it, it does the job it's actually it's perfectly adequate for a knife like that which is not heavy so I think what I'm trying to say is that it's it, it's amazing what you can do with so little and with just basic techniques um, and another example is is this bag here which is is based on a courier bag and i bought all these items i bought from uh, what we call a haberdashers which is a kind of a a store where you can buy braid and buckles and uh, belts and nylon webbing and all these kind of you know buckles and fittings like that uh, i made this out of two layers of uh, truck tarpaulin um, which is a very heavy duty kind of cordura fabric and it's got on the inside it's got this uh, this pocket which I, I robbed a zip here that was off a north face bag so you've got a central pocket there some old junk in it uh, and then two side pockets here that you can put things like pens in pencils whatever and that's sewn along this top edge and I used uh, what they call sort of binding this binding fabric which you can see here you've got a contrast black fabric if you look at this closely you'll see that the uh, the stitching is absolutely terrible it's really really terrible it's not very good quality uh, I did this on a, a sewing machine you can see where I went round the edge here and then tried to singe the uh, the threads but the the bag itself is um, it's kind of like a small courier sized bag which I used for, for work uh, and I used an old car uh, seat belt which you can see how I've sewn that on here and then you've got the buckle there is a brand of uh, courier bags which actually has that kind of fitting and I made sure that the the buckle uh, was in the right place and that I could adjust the the strap for me so that it sits in the right place um, but again I didn't, you know, I didn't have a lot of experience, certainly not with making a bag of this size. Um, this was quite a challenge. Uh, it could be better. Uh, that's a little badge that I bought that I got from Singapore. 
uh, this reflective tape was for if I was riding my bike and riding in the evening that at least that would reflect some light back and then all of these little buckles and straps I bought as I say from haberdashers um, the the webbing here is actually this is actually cotton it's not as good as that that's nylon again that was robbed off a, a, a waste pack uh, so I kind of um, made some cinch straps to, to go round there just to kind of cinch it in a bit but it, it it's you know it's it's an effective bag it works really well uh, the only problem is that I tend to overload that and then it gets quite heavy so I'm not using it currently but I would have another go at the time I actually said I would never make another one but I got the pattern for this uh, off the internet I just literally went in and uh, googled courier bag uh, patterns and then I printed one out on A4 and then I got a big sheet of uh, brown paper and sketched out this and basically cut out two layers of fabric one I put with the uh, the kind of material side outside and then this one I put the the rubber backing on the inside so there's actually two layers there you've, you've got two layers of fabric it's pretty waterproof um, and and it has worked really well hasn't hasn't fallen apart on me yet but I, I just wanted to kind of show how with you know a bit of basic uh, applying yourself um, it's it's not that difficult to make you know different different kind of items with uh, with very few pieces of uh, sort of fancy equipment um, you know and I, I would sort of encourage anybody to to kind of have a go and you know to, to think about making things uh, for themselves because you you will get an enormous amount of understanding and even if it doesn't work out completely well like this bag you know there's lots of faults to it uh, the fact is you will learn so much from the process that it will encourage you to uh, do better when you come to make something else in the future so I called it I called it sewing for men because uh, you know being able to maintain your kit your bags uh, tools equipment all of that kind of thing and, and make covers and carry cases and sheaths and things like that is, is a really useful skill to have and I'd sort of encourage anybody to you know have a go and you know make a sketch like this make a little sketch uh, if, if that helps you know if you need to see it visually or a, a paper pattern you know like this one for the actual tool or whatever it is you you want to make have a go doing that and um, yeah just just um, have a go really and uh, with that in mind I'll, I'll leave you all in peace and I hope this was useful or encouraged somebody to uh, to try some of these things and, and have a go for themselves okay take care